Good morning. Here we are. It is the second week of December, and I'm so happy to be here. I was telling everyone in the sound check this morning that I awakened so happy this morning that I really just sprang out of my bed. Just so happy, so filled with joy, and I know it's spirit in through and as me, and it's also one of the innate qualities of spirit that is me, joyousness. However, onward and upward we go into our play date with spirit, and before we start on the play date, I want to say thank you to, oh, I see her, Reverend Ikea Param. We were practitioner class sisters, and here we are together. So thank you, uh, Reverend Ikea, for joining us today. It's so fabulous to see your gorgeous face and to know that you are, we are here together, as well as all of us here together. Together. We all came today committed to have the most joyous, the most fun, and the most well-lit play date with spirit that to date that's possible. So the, uh, the as Reverend Joan told us, our monthly theme this month is recapturing the light. And Reverend Joan taught us last week all about recapturing the light. And now here we are, the second week of the month, where we're going to have fun and play with fireflies of spirit. So of course, you all know me, and if you don't know me by now yet, uh, it's about joy, it's about love, it's about glee, it's about silliness, it's about humor, so we're starting with a joke. <laughs> so I have a joke for us, and this joke is not because I so love Reverend Joan, but this is just the one that happened to show up because it's a joke about a Catholic priest. <laughs> and so <laughs> a Catholic priest announces one day at his service or at church that he'll be going to Rome. The following week and so he says if any of you have any wishes or dreams let me know and i'll light a candle in rome so that your wish can come true okay so and and i myself have had the privilege of lighting a candle at, at the vatican so you can do that you know okay so a woman announces you know my husband and i have been trying and trying to have children and it appears that we have not been successful we've been married for several years and we haven't had any children could you please light a candle so that we can have children so the priest, of course, says, I'll do that. Yes, I will do that. So five years goes by and the woman says to the priest, comes up to the priest and says, you know, since you went to Rome and lit that candle, I've given birth to two sets of twins, a set of triplets, and I'm pregnant again now. And she then turns and gives the priest a plane ticket for that's that's, you know, from wherever their place of beginning to Rome. And he says, oh, you're too, too kind. You don't have to thank me in that way. And she says, I'm not thanking you. I just want you to go to Rome and blow out that candle. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So here we are in, in having fun and knowing that, you know, the light is always brings us something. So, so uh, about fireflies of spirit. Now, when I was a girl, I'm from the Midwest. And when I was a girl in the summer, there was fireflies everywhere. And I, I, we called them lightning bugs, but their real name is fireflies, okay? And I didn't know, I, I have to tell you the truth, I have to be transparent before we, before we start this, is that back then we used to rip the backs off of the fireflies and make them into necklaces and bracelets and earrings. Now, I realize now that that was really cruel However, at the time, I was not aware, and I certainly don't think my parents were aware of what we were doing to these animals. However, I have always had a fascination with fireflies, and that was one of the things I would look forward to, along with the humidity and the mosquitoes in the Midwestern <laughs> summers, was that we got in the evening, we got to go outside and see the fireflies. So I decided to really research what, what I had been calling the little Verona in me was calling lightning bugs. What 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 are really are fireflies? So fireflies, there's a few things I want to share with you about them. Fly fireflies are flying beetles. They're part of the beetle family. Okay, so they're flying beetles. Now, I don't really have an aversion to beetles at all. I hope you don't either, because that's what they are. Okay. <laughs> they're a form of beetles. They and and when they have that light, you know, that light that they have going, what is that light? That light is actually a mating call. That light is actually bring actually about love and procreation. That light is actually bringing them into the oneness of spirit, the unity of spirit. And the light is also what they use the light for. Also, this is fascinating to me. I'm realizing I'm I'm realizing I'm kind of turning into a science geek a little because it was fascinating to me that they also use that light when they have their larvae larvae when they're when they're protecting their larvae from predators. They they spin a net over the larvae and it, the larvae also lights up. 
because it's it's you know it's to keep them it's a protection from predators however mainly that what came to me is when they light up like that it's about being in the oneness of spirit you know it's about coming together it's about being in the unity of spirit okay so another thing first thing second thing i learned about fireflies is they don't bite and they're not poison to humans which is a really great thing i mean they're not like mosquitoes <laughs> which mosquitoes are wonderful. There's a place in this world for mosquitoes. Every animal does something for every one of us. Okay, I'm not downing any any particular beingness of spirit. However, fireflies, which we're talking about here, they don't bite and they're not poisonous to humans. Now they are poisonous to some of their predators, which makes good sense to me. However, they're not poisonous at all. And they're, they're, they really live in a space and place of serenity and calm and tranquility. Yeah, they're just flying around, you know, doing what they're doing, being who they are, but they're not, they're not harmful at all. And so the uh, next thing that I'd like you to know about fireflies is that they're a natural pesticide and a pollinator. Now, this really freaked me out because I thought bees were the big time pollinators. Well, fireflies are too. Fireflies, actually, um, they, they, can, they can diminish the predators in your garden, if you have a garden like snails and slugs, but they also, so that in that way, they're a natural pesticide, but they also pollinate because by, by what they ingest and then how they release it. So, so it came to me that they also, what fireflies are, is they are a beneficent presence. They're a beneficent presence. They are filled with generosity and givingness. So now we get to know that fireflies are about unity and love. They're about tranquility and serenity, and they're also about generosity and givingness. And how this fits with me, in, it came to me like this reading by Ernest Holmes, it was real clear to me about keeping our light trimmed and burning with the oil of pure spirit, glorifying the indwelling God. Well, unbeknownst to me, the little girl who was a savage back in the <laughs> in this 50s and 60s with fireflies, that's what fireflies are too. That's exactly what fireflies are doing. They are there keeping, they're trimming the wick and keeping the, the, the indwelling spirit burning, keeping that light burning. So recently I had the opportunity to set myself down and have like a little Disney a fun, okay? Because I have, thanks to my wonderful daughter, Leah, I have Disney Plus. And so I thought, I'm gonna watch a Disney movie. I wanna, I'm gonna watch a feel good movie. So, and one that I hadn't seen before was this movie called Tangled. Okay, so I sat down to watch Tangled and it was interesting because it was really a retelling of the Rapunzel story. And what was interesting about that was when I was a little girl, and this is pure transparency, um, I lived in a house that was very paternalistic. That is to say, my father ruled the roost. Well, he thought he did. However, <laughs> he, he, my mother had other ideas. We, we were all, we were, my father and like four, four women, and then we got our brother much, much later on. But anyway, and so whatever it was that my father wanted was what happened. Well, one of the things my father wanted was that we all have long hair. That was just part of it. I mean, you, no one has ever seen me with it, but I, I most of my life, I had really, really long hair. When I came to be an adult, that was one of my forms of liberation. Cut that stuff off. However, <laughs> and so I'm telling you, why am I sharing that with you? Like, why is she telling us this little tidbit of something we may not want to know? Because Rapunzel used to be one of my favorite stories. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair because we had such long hair. And I always thought, oh, I could do that. Anyway, I digress, but just a little fun, fun fact. So this, this movie Tangled, was about a young woman that uh, she was she was born to royalty. She was stolen. She was by a uh, evil witch. She was put in a tower. She was locked in there, and the evil witch uh, convinced her that she was her mother, and that she she just had to stay in the tower, and that was all there was to it. And here's the part that's important to us today, though, is that her hair had a healing presence within it. Yeah, that whatever she put her hair on something, it healed things. And of course, then the um, the prince, not he's not a prince, but someone shows up in the princely form of these, you know, sort of Disney movies. And he has a, he gets hurt and she puts her hair over it and it heals him. And then, of course, they go on in the movie, you know, we know Disney, they go on in the movie to vanquish everything and it's happy ending. However, for which was great, which was wonderful and it was just what I was looking for. Has, but what, what drew, drew me to it was that there was a light within her 
that was shining within her, that she wasn't even aware of the light, but that it was doing things, it was being things for her and others. It was making her a beneficent presence on the planet, you know? And then also every year in the movie, every year her parents would have a celebration on the date of her birth, and it was the light, a celebration of light, and the celebration of light was their, their, um, they were trying their best to draw her back to them somehow to get her back. And where she was hidden in this tower, of course, as movies go, she could see these lights, and she was drawn to the lights. And she really, um, it took her a while to have the realization that the light that I'm drawn to is the light that's within me, and the reason I'm drawn to it is it's integrating itself back with itself. So I thought, wow, this is really interesting. I mean, because, you know, these Disney movies, they're, they're movies. They're made by Disney. And they do a lot of times have a real good meaning in the midst of them. And something that I read recently, well, not recently, maybe a, maybe a decade ago, is that the Disney movies now, they plan it so that um, they appeal to adults as well as children. Actually, I didn't read that. My daughter with the marketing degree told me that. <laughs> that that's that's the Disney stick these days. And that's just, that's great because I love that this movie Tangled brought this all up for me so that I could bring it to all of us today so that we could see that that light that we're drawn to is the light that is within us as well as the light that is within the fireflies because each one of us is truly a firefly of spirit. Each one of us is those things of spirit that the fireflies represent. So I was thinking, in what ways can we embrace our firefly-ness? I don't know if that's a word, but it is now. And actually really allow the light of spirit to shine. And so what came to me is those, those things about the fireflies that I shared before. First, you know, when they're shining that light, it's the light of, it's a mating call of love, of procreation. It's the light of unity. And so for each one of us in our lives, we can absolutely step into the oneness that we are, you know, really, really, really step into and embrace and embody and, and just own completely the unity of spirit that we are. And we get to do it in trust and in faith. And I'm so glad she's here. We get to do it in trust and faith. And we really just get, we get to own the life force within and as each one of us. And we get to do it in whatever way we'd like. However, we get to be a part of the oneness. You know, we get to know that we, not a part of, we are the oneness and that it just lights and sprinkles itself out into the world in the unique and unrepeatable ways that each one of us is. So that's the first way in our lives we get to, we have the opportunity to be the fireflies of spirit. And the second way is, you know, the fireflies know they don't bite, they don't, they don't bite, and they don't, they're not poisonous. And so that's a form to me of serenity and harmony and tranquility. And each one of us gets to be the serenity and the harmony and tranquility of spirit no matter what's going on on the human realm, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sometimes feels like, we get to absolutely go within and remember and know that there's a serenity and a harmony and a tranquility that is when, uh, within us wanting to come out. You know, it's already in there. And so it's just in there patiently and joyously and faithfully waiting for us to let it out. Because as we all know, the only way that spirit can take form on this planet is through each, each of us. Like the, the divine consciousness takes form through and as each one of us. So it takes form through and as each one of us in harmony in tranquility and serenity. So the third way that we can actually embrace it in our lives, I like to call these the practical ways, because a lot of times when things come up and out for me, I think, wow, spirit, this is spectacular. And in what way do I let this come through my humanness, through my hands and feet and all this, all this humanness that I've chosen to be a part of this time around. And so the other way it can come out is to be a beneficent expression on the planet, which is generosity and givingness. You know, each one of us gets to be generosity and giving this. I recently was at Costco. Now, I forgot that going to Costco just before the holiday is quite an adventure. <laughs> and so, and usually I have to tell you when I go to Costco, usually I have this wonderful, wonderful reunion with Reverend Cindy because we usually <laughs> end up at Costco together. So it usually, you know, it makes it like, oh yeah, no matter how, 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 how busy and blustery and how much going on there is, okay, I see Reverend Cindy. Well, this time I didn't see Reverend Cindy. And so I'm in Costco and I, I really, I truly had forgotten because I don't go there all the time. I go there a lot, but I don't go there all the time. And it was, it was, it was like craziness in there. 
and there was someone um on one of those riding scooters and i thought of reverend joan that that you know not not because reverend joan has to ride one but because we had a discussion about the riding scooters availability when reverend joan was still required to wear the boot while her body healed itself okay i just want to be clear about that so they had the riding scooters and there was a man on the riding scooter and there was a gaggle of people over by the fish and this man on the riding scooter was like you could tell he was trying to get in there but there was a lot of people there and so i was just standing there because i was just there to get my fresh halibut and i just looked around and i noticed and I thought, oh, he's trying to get in. So the light of spirit, the firefly of spirit within me of generosity and givingness told me, spirit spoke very clearly to me, walk over there and ask that man, what kind of fish is it he wants? Which I did. And he told me he wanted, it turned out he wanted the same kind of fish I did in the same price range. So it was easy. And I said, okay, I'll get that for you. So I went in the case, got it, brought it over to his scooter handed it to him. Now, I'm not telling you all that so you can say, oh, that wonderful Reverend Barona, oh, look at how special she is. No, 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 not at all. It's just that the beneficence of spirit, it came pouring through me. I want to tell you in my humanness, when it first came through, I thought, spirit, I have other things to do. <laughs> I have other errands to do, spirit. And spirit made it real clear. Mm -hmm. Yes, Verona, and this is yours to be right now, to be that to be the firefly of spirit and to be that beneficence and to do something for someone who you can do something for. So the thing that really is clear to me now was clear to me then too, is that, you know, the light that we are, the radiant light of spirit that each one of us is, it shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot and does not overcome it. Now, I would like to take full ownership for or authorship for that, but really it's just from the first book of John, uh, the fifth, the first chapter of John, the fifth verse in the Bible. Once again, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So we get to know that even in the darkness, even when we might have some darkness, the light, the light shines. You know, the firefly that we are, it keeps flying, it keeps shining, it keeps fluttering, it keeps, keeps being the oneness, the serenity, the tranquility of spirit and the beneficence of spirit. So I just want to try a little something right now. I want to invite you to close your outer eyes and breathe at your normal rate of breathing. And allow yourself just in this moment to think into, to feel into, to be in the awareness of any place in your life where there seems to be darkness, any darknesses in the life of spirit that you, with your own unique and splendiferous and spectacular self are. And as you allow it to come up, allow it to show up, remember that you're allowing it to come up in a container of safety and security. And you're allowing it to come up in this very moment for clarity and guidance. And then just think of whatever is this space or thing or entity of darkness that has shown up and give yourself an opportunity to apply these three steps. To apply the oneness of spirit the unity in the oneness of spirit to the darkness, to apply the serenity and tranquility of the life force itself, and to apply the beneficence, the generosity, the givingness, the blessingness of spirit in and around and over in this seeming space of darkness knowing that the firefly of spirit that you are, that I am, that we are, that it is, the thing itself is, is ever present in the darkness. And then just allow yourself hmm, to release this. Wiggle your fingers and your toes if you'd like. Stamp your feet if it speaks to you. 
and allow yourself to come back to this space. Open your outer eyes. And just feel how wonderful that feels. How enriching. Just feel the waves of calm and serenity and tranquility now. Just pouring over us, being us, knowing us, magnetizing to us, accepting each one of us. The fireflies of spirit that we are. This is in our capabilities. This is within our range. This is part of our flight pattern. <laughs> you know, this is the flight pattern that spirit has given to us. That in the blueprint that we came with, this is our flight pattern. This is a part of our flight pattern. So I want, I want, I want to finish up with one more story. I want to tell you a story, and I, I, I realize it might be a lot of stories, but I, I, this was one I could not. This is one just I couldn't let go. I couldn't, I couldn't overlook. So. This is a story about, you probably maybe know this story about the astronaut. His name is Jim Lovell. And this was in 1953. And Jim Lovell was a pilot with the U.S. Air Force. And he was flying from an aircraft carrier off the coast of Japan. And so one night while he was doing his first, first nighttime flight, he was on his way back when the panel board in his aircraft short-circuited. And to make matters worse, he lost complete radio communication. Okay, can you imagine? Like he's out there. I personally have been flying over the Pacific in the dark of night. I get it. <laughs> he's out there. He's hanging over the Pacific. He has no radio communication. His panel has short circuited. And he knows that if he lands short, he's going to crash. If he lands long, he's going to end up in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, and so he, he knows that he doesn't have any lights and he doesn't have any instruments. He, he feels mechanically. He doesn't have any lights. He doesn't have any instruments. And it, it's going to be a difficult landing. And so he he allows himself, I believe, to go within and know his unity and spirit, allows himself to uh, own some serenity and allows himself to know the beneficence of the life force is with him. And so it's pitch black all around him. And the, there's nothing that there's there appears to be nothing that's going to help him. However, all of a sudden he looks up and he sees a luminescent line of lights in the ocean from the aircraft carrier, carrier to where he is. And he realizes, look at this. This is my shot. It's a soft green light and it's leading straight back to his aircraft carrier. And so he follows that light. And of course he lands safely on the aircraft carrier. And what was that light? It was the bioluminescence, which is the same thing as our fireflies. It was the bioluminescence of some algae that had been stirred up by the carrier being in that spot in the ocean. By the carrier moving and grooving in that spot in the ocean. I mean, this is giving me God bumps just to share it with you because it's once again bioluminescence. Is the bioluminescence of spirit the same thing as the fireflies of spirit that each one of us is? That's exactly what happened with him. That's exactly how he made his way back. So mm, before we finish, also, I forgot to use an example in my own life because a lot of times I give these ideas and I give, okay, do be this, be that. Here's the example in my own life. And the example in my own life, I'm going to share with you because you're my family and I get to be transparent. In my family, you're my beloved family of spirit and I get to be transparent. In my family of origin, the family that we share blood, we have a big brouhaha going on right now. It started yesterday and my sister called me to let me know, oh, the you know what has hit the fan. And um, there's a lot, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of other things happening with it and I won't go into it. It's just that one person shared something with another person that was not theirs to share and you know, blah, de, blah, de, blah. You know, families are our place of the highest and best growth. Okay, and so when my sister called me screaming and crying yesterday, I, I, we talked, we yelled, we screamed, I did too. And then when I got off the phone, I thought, okay, so spirit, here we go, firefly of spirit. What, what is my space in this? And I realized it's the three things we're talking about here. First, I get to remember the unity, the oneness with spirit, and no matter what appears to be going on in our family, no matter what appears to be um, being broken down, no matter whose feelings appear to be, being hurt, I get to remember the oneness, that it's all done in the oneness, that in the midst of it all, spirit is. I, Verona, Reverend Verona, get to be the serenity and tranquility in it all. Now, initially, when I was thinking of this last night, I was thinking, 
excuse my language, but I want to be the, you know, I want to be the hard one here. No, <laughs> I, did, I get to be the serenity and the tranquility. I get to be the firefly of spirit. And also I get to realize that there's some blessings in this. There's some beneficence in this that maybe we, none of us can see yet. Maybe we're not aware of yet, but that it's there. So in this way, I get to use the same things that we're talking about. And I want to let you know, I'm going to report back to you how I did next week. Okay, or I'll report back to you some way. And also, it is a challenge for me. It feels like a challenge. However, it is not a challenge when I realize that I get to be just what we all are, firefly of spirit, flying around, bringing all those things. So my challenge to you is, in what parts of your life, in what areas of darkness, seeming darkness, can you be a firefly of spirit? In what areas can you bring the oneness, the tranquility, the serenity, and the beneficence of spirit? You know the answer, so go get it. Let's pray. 